we have within us a story and an understanding of what we mean to say, and we have a language with which to express it. It can be written language, spoken language. It can be the movement of a camera, a camera pushing in. We talked about this first day. Look at this push in, I said. What's it suggesting? When the camera pushes in, the audience believes that something significant is going to happen. How does that correspond to our life? It doesn't. When something significant happens in our lives, the world suddenly doesn't get better than we push into it. But it happens in film. And we don't even think to comment on it. We simply experience it. It is a language, a secret code that's not so secret because we all share it, but we don't reference it. There's no lexicon or book that we can open up to go, oh, push in, suggest significant action. But it's what we must know as filmmakers, as artists, to recognize how it works. That's just one language. The most obvious, and that's why I cite it. What about editing? What is editing but music? Music. Not magic, but it is magic. What's magical about music is that it causes a visceral reaction, visceral, within us, without us being able to identify the object signifiers that cause that reaction. You play music, we respond. That is the essence of art. That is the essence of film. It's no mistake that the one magician we have in class is also a musician. <laughs> Because music is magical. And when we put it in a sequence, maybe with a push in and the music plays, the audience responds. Manipulative, as we were saying at the end, absolutely. It is a manipulative medium, but in the service of God, or our gods, or we are a collection of gods in the temple of art. We manipulate our audience to affect them to alter their view of the world, to give them new eyes to see the world, to provide inspiration, motivation, to make them believe in the possibility of change, change the one constant. It is always there when we lose faith in change and think that we're destined for the ordinary, for the banal, for death and life. And so it is with our characters, who think that they will be forever inert, locked possibly in a prison house of their own fear, thinking themselves not capable <coughs> of escape, of rescue, of redemption, until events transpire, or they make, they make, A choice wherein they open one door and close a hundred more. That's just not the character that does that. So also, so also, is it every director, every filmmaker, every cinematographer, making decision upon decision in an act of madness, and self-destructive Pyrrhic insanity. I will do this and not do all of that. Impossible to do, but essential. All these things blend together. When I talk about one thing, I talk about another. No thing can be separated from the other. Character is director. The experience of the director making decisions are the same thing the characters are doing in the film. Acting courageously. Choosing what not to do as well as what to do. And that decision for a character could lead to disaster. And decision of a director can lead to a disaster. And our own decisions in our lives can lead to disaster. One thing is not different from the other. Your experience of life, your experience as a filmmaker, your experience as an artist, your experience of your characters is all the same thing. We are that actor on that table naked. 
with no safety net beneath us, making choice upon choice, uncertain whether we should go forward or go back, and we may fall. And that is the essence of life and the joy of it. Because we are limbically overwhelmed by the stimulation of our fear that we may vanquish ourselves or we may triumph and make it to another side to an uncertain, unknown, and possibly meaningless future. But we go forward. This is our experience as characters, our experience as directors, and our experience of our characters and of ourselves 